Right, hello and welcome to the Travel Troll, Travel Trolls TV. We're at Moise, how do you say it? Moise's, Moise's Hall. Hall Museum. Now this got voted the best museum in Suffolk in 2017. Quite excited, but we've only got an hour on parking, so we're gonna have to rush around. Let's go. Okay. Just to let you know, it's normally four pounds each to get in here, but the gallery's shut, the gallery's shut. So it's only two pound each, which sounds good to me because gallery usually means art. Don't do art. <laughs> so let's go just look in the museum, especially proper bits for half price. So we're starting at the very top of the museum. This is the Suffolk Regiment Room. Maz is very quiet, and so I just asked why. She says, "Well, I can't get a word in edgeways today." <laughs> oh, do you want to say anything? No. No. I think she would. Yeah, this is a Suffolk Regiment room, so let's have a look around and see if there's anything worth showing. Okay, first display case. Better throw this in. We've got a Webley. A Webley service revolver. Everyone likes to see a gun now and again. A big Lewis machine gun down here. That's quite cool. You've got a picture here of a, a lady. Now, a, a soldier was wearing this underneath his coat and a bullet hit him. Passed through the frame, it said, and went through his arm. Now where, oh yeah, there at the top, look, you can see the big bit of damage up there. Saved his life, a picture of his lady. Will you save my life one day? Yes, yeah, thank you. Back in World War I, a soldier had carved this. That is beautiful. Big uh, wooden, it made out of a tree trunk, and he'd carved it all out into a big jug. Got a bugle here from uh, the Boer War in January 1900. Very battered. But that, can you imagine finding that with a metal detector? They're nice as well. Look at that. Look at carving on that. Johannesburg Boer War look. Somebody was very good at attending school back in 1895 96. A hundred and, what, 23 years ago, and he was awarded this little desk. You'd be so chuffed to bits to get that, wouldn't you? Having said that, personally, I'd prefer to knock off school for about 20 days. You'd have a lot more fun than with a little writing desk. Each to their own, I suppose. Just a tiny bit. A lot of displays are empty today. This is why it's reduced in price, I'm guessing, but you've got like a bussy bit here. Transport a bit and look at these badges here. Now I've got a little story about one of them badges. I were outside York train station with Craig once and we found a badge, a drive like a, a post. Oh no, it was postman. Sorry, it was a postman badge. So it said on the back, um, please return for a reward. So we went to the post office and we gave him the badge back. Didn't give us anything. Took us names and addresses. Note. <laughs> Didn't get anything, so if you ever see a badge like that, keep it. Keep it. You won't get out <laughs> for it. The old bus conductor's ticket machines. Do you remember them? Yeah, I do actually. You remember them? No, I don't know. No. <laughs> no, probably not. I certainly do. Mazzy? Yeah. You wouldn't know what time it is, would you? I need to keep an eye on time because we've only got an hour for parking. Can't find time anywhere. <coughs> clocks everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's just hundreds of clocks and uh, what do you call them? Pocket watches. Grandfather clocks and pocket watches. I think these are my favourite because I believe the Germans are most known for the clocks. The Germans and the Swiss. And these, I looking at that, I think they've come from the Deutsche Museum, which I've been in, um, in Berlin. I bet they're on loan from there, but really nice decorations. Now that's one of my favourite clocks ever. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a, a little black Zulu type man. I don't, that's all I can think of describing him. But he's got like a big whip in his hand. And where it points, it tells you the time at the top, look. That is fantastic. 
So now we're in the section which is my kind of thing with swords and metal detecting fines and things. But look in here, you've got a little ring there. An inscribed ring. That's the best view I'm going to get. Ah, there you are. And it's all inscribed and it actually says on it, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, but in Latin. That's really nice. It's old as well, look at that, 13 to 1400. What did you just say? I just wanted to say a croquet bell thing. Crotal bell. Crotal bell. Crotal bell, that's what I was thinking. It's huge. That is the biggest one I've ever seen. <laughs> and very well decorated. I want to know how old it is. Yeah, it doesn't say. No, there's no signs telling you about it, but that is a, the best crotal bell I've ever seen. We've got some really fascinating Mary Tudor things in here. Queen of France, who was in the last video, we showed you her too. This is a helmet, I believe, worn at a funeral or something. I can't really work out what that's trying to say. I might be completely wrong, but read that and make a bit of whatever you want. But that's old and that's wonderful, apart from the silly dog on his head. Looks a bit silly. But look at this. A lock of Mary Tudor's hair. Now, she was known to have bright ginger hair and that just confirms it. There's your proof. You don't get much more ginger than that. You've also got some really old wood carvings in here. Such as this at the back, which is late 1400s from a church. You can see a fox right in the middle there. But well, this is what interests me. This is late 1400s and it's got a merman on it. A male mermaid. And that is carved of stone from the 13, 1400s of a monk holding a book. You know, this is proper history. I, I, I just love things like this. It's not things you can see every day. Here you've got finds from in the abbey, you know, like, I don't know if they were found with a metal detector, I'm presuming so. You've got some 15th century purse bars there, which are really cool. And you've got writing on the top one there, which actually says on it, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. That's pretty cool. Oh, I would have loved to have been the one given the opportunity to metal detect in there. And these are gaming pieces which were found in the Abbey grounds. You've got uh, the Queen, apparently, on one side, and a knight on the other. Little gaming um, pieces. They're dating from... The 14, they're dating from the 1400s as well. There's a really nice stone water tank here with writing going all the way around it. I'm reading the sign down here, this is what it says. Your long hunt for a drink had better end here, man. And for all gifts, thank the Lord. So here's a good picture which shows you where we have been in the last few days. Here you've got the cathedral. It's a tiny little bit here. Sorry, here. It's tiny. Here you've got St Mary's Church where you've got the Queen uh, Mary Tudor in the corner there. And this is how big the abbot would have been compared to the two of them. Just shows you how big this was. And it, as I say, it was the third largest building in Europe during its time. One thing I was looking out for when I came here, I read about it, is this little thing, look. An Aestel, I think I'm pronouncing that right, from the 9th century. And these are very, very rare. Apparently there's only 10 in England ever been found. And that could, some people say, have belonged to St Edmund himself. Because you had to be incredibly important to have one of them, usually royalty. So I was just looking at the pyramid mount, sword scabbard mount thing on the back there. That's nice. But then the eyes were brought to this. Now, what do you think that is, guys? That's a merman. It's definitely a merman. But you're trying to say it's a crucifix. <laughs> you're so funny. I'm not trying to be funny. That looks like a merman. He's a crazy, he's lost his arms, obviously. I think they've got that wrong. I think that's a merman. <laughs> there is a merman over there. I've just been showing everyone it. Is yeah. Now that is the most fascinating thing I've seen all day. That is a wolf skull. And you know where they found that? Yeah. 
You know where the abbey is, where they say St Edmund is buried, mm -hmm. who was protected by a wolf? They found this, where did they find it? The bottom of the Norman Tower. Well, the bottom of the Norman Tower, which is just, just next to the abbey. Could that be something to do with the wolf of St Edmund? And I was just looking over here as well, I'm thinking this is supposed to be the wolf and St Edmund, but I'm not sure because there's no signs up. Go on, Mazzy. No. Yeah, go on. No, we don't have time. Yeah, you've got time, go on. <laughs> Look, it's medieval, medieval dress up and handling. That's what it's there for. You've got to put it on, come on. Come on, it's for a video. We don't have time. No, we've got plenty of time. Go on, just stick that on your head. That's a good girl. Yeah, that's going to suit you. Oh, oh, match look. my blue eyes. I was commenting on my blue eyes today. Yeah, the lady in the last church said, Oh, you've got lovely blue eyes. Do I look lovely? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you look all right. This is what I'd have looked like all them years ago. I was setting off to work in the morning. <laughs> no one's going to mess with me today. There's a huge lead ingot here which they found. Ixworth Priory, which I've never heard of. We're going to have to go there. Do you know which county it's in? No. Okay, but this was buried outside there, and they believe it might have been stolen because it belongs to the crown, because you've got the stamps of the crown on, on top. I can't say I know what they call these. I'm not sure what it is, but it's like a music box on wheels. And I think... Does it... I think inside is like a piano, and they pretend to play it, but it's actually done by winding that. And on here, this is the songs which are on it. And I, I pack up your troubles, I know that one. I can't say I know any of the others. But they'll all have been sing-along songs once upon a time, probably Victorian times. If you'd like to know what banknotes used to look like, there's a five pounds from the 1700s, 1800s. You've got ten guineas there, one pound, and five guineas. They look as if someone's just got a piece of paper and scribbled that on. <laughs> You've got what's called a deed chest there. Now look at all the locks on this. You've got six locks, and each lock took two keys. So to open this, you'd have to have all 12 keys present to open it, which would, and they'd probably have one person having each key. So you'd have like 12 people in the committee, and they'd all have to get together to be able to open this. I don't know what they'd have put in it. Something incredibly important, I'm sure. Got a big pile of coshes and traps here. Um, like man traps for people who were going poaching. The farmers had put these in the fields, which used to be legal, it's not now obviously. And you've got a sign there saying beware. So I've just been made a fool of. These are animal traps. I've been corrected by Mazzy. Um, this is a man trap. <laughs> Look at the size of it. Oh, 1800. That's an old man trap. And just behind it there, you've got some stocks. And there, that's pretty cool, look at that, a big... Is that a prison... ...door? All these are to attach you to walls when you're in jail and things. Got a body iron here, which would go around your waist and these would... ...your arm in there or something and you'd be attached to the wall. But I don't know what this is, can someone explain this to me? A dog collar, 1775. Brass dog collar from the jail. Obviously not for a dog. So that would go around the guy's neck and is it just 
I'm guessing it's so that he keeps his head straight because if he moves, yeah. it's going to cut. It would hurt, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's my guess, but if anyone knows any more about a dog collar, please leave it in the comments. So you've got some interesting things in here going on about a guy called William Corder. And we didn't know who he was, but if you read this, it will tell you the full story. It's basically a guy who had a woman in 1827 and they went running off together or something. And she was never seen again. I'll let you read the full story yourselves, but it turns out she was found underneath the floorboards in, uh, in a barn and he killed her. Now this is a bust of his head. This is quite freaky. And down here you've got his death mask. And this was one of the most well documented murder cases in the 1800s I believe. Um, and there's a picture of him up above. William Corder and the Red Barn Murder. You bad, bad man. He looks evil, doesn't he? He looks hard. You wouldn't mess with him, would you? You wouldn't like, you know, if he were going to murder you, he'd murder you, wouldn't he? He's horrible. He is horrible. He looks a bit better on his death mask, let's be honest. Yeah, you've got more interesting things here. These are William's pistols pair of his pistols there and these I'm guessing they're trying to say these could have been part of the murder weapon a mole spud found in the red barn and this was made from part of the red barn when it was destroyed a snuff box and behind it there is the red barn itself I want to go home and read about this murder now in fact I'm hoping there's a, a film about it that'd make a good film wouldn't it I'm going to look him up. William Calder and the Red Barn Murder. Oh, is that her? Is that who we murdered? I think so. Poor woman. You've got mummified cats here, which have been found in chimneys and behind walls and things. And you just said, good luck charms, because you've read that, yeah? Yeah. And it's true, it's to ward off evil spirits. People did it to scare witches off and things. And down there, you've actually got a witch's puppet. <laughs> From the 1700s. That's scary. That's lovely. And there you've got a little kitten from the 17th century. Another cat here. That You know, they're quite freaky, these things, but... Good luck charms there. It says it there, look, 17th century. It's funny you've just mentioned the witch bottle. Because you're, you haven't clicked here yet, have you? No. I've told you this story before. Yeah. When we told the story about the witches yeah. and the bottles and they used to fill them the with and pins and things. Yeah. Is and that one of those? That's one of those. Wow. Tells you a bit of the story there. But that is one of them. I think they had to be a certain size. I think it was half a litre or something. That is a witch's bottle. And I'm guessing that is the contents of what they found inside this one. I've seen these before, this is a gibbet cage and this one actually held the body of a guy called, uh, says on here somewhere John Nichols. John Nichols They found him inside this in Bury St Edmunds still with his shoes on and here is a picture of it with with John Nichols inside that is gruesome to think, right where my hand is, there was a dead man hanging there back in 1794. Here's the story if you want to read about it. Right, Mo Moises Hall oh. Museum, what did you think of that one? It, it was alright. There was quite a bit of it closed off I think, yeah. but I'm not sure which. And I think it was just art. She said the gallery is closed, so I think it was just the art bit. If it was just the art bit, and that is all there is, there's not that much to see. I was hoping to see more, I must admit. If you paid full price of £4, you'd expect to see a lot more than that. Yeah. But there were some really interesting yeah. things in there. What was your favourite thing? The crime and punishment section with like the man trap and the, um, the bigs where they found the skeleton. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I personally liked uh, Mary Tudor's hair. Uh, yeah. That was my highlight because I've got Mary Tudor on the head at the moment. 
<laughs> Apparently she was the most beautiful um, princess and queen yeah. in Europe. But I've seen her hair and it was very ginger. <laughs> she must have had a really amazing <laughs> face because she loses two marks for being ginger in the first place, doesn't she? And, you know, there's not wrong with there's ginger people. No, ginger. there's not wrong with ginger people. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... Each you're never going to be as good, the best Each looking person out of ten if you've got ginger. <laughs> okay, we love ginger people. Uh, let's go. Moyes. Moyes is who? Um, six. Six. I will give it... Just because it could have had more stuff. It could have had a lot more stuff. I'll give it a seven simply because some of the curiosities in there were fantastic. Thanks for joining us, guys, on Thanks. Travel Trolls TV. We'll see you very soon. Bye. Goodbye.